inspired you to do art? I liked to draw from the time I was very little, but I especially liked clay, funny enough. Uh, one of my memories is being in first grade and we all had like, oil-based clay. And I remember the teacher allowed us to get that out and I was really into making that clay and we had to put it away. And it was like the worst thing that ever happened to me. Like that was like I guess the first time I realized how regimented school was. But I loved clay. I loved making things. Who is your favorite artist and why? At what age? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think when I was um, uh, your age. How old are you, Ken? I'm 28. 28. Mm. Well, by that time, by the time I was 28, I really liked photographers, and I was interested in Paul Strand. I have to say, I'm still very much a fan of Paul Strand's photography. Um, but as far as painters, I have to admit that I really liked impressionists like Degas and Renoir. And, um, who else did I really like? Actually, I think Manet and Monet, that whole Impressionist, Post-Impressionist um, school. I like the colors, the freedom, actually. And later when I studied photography, I realized that photography had a big influence on that group of artists because they were able to paint and not feel like they had to be so representational. They could express with color and shape and um, the way that guy used the, you know, he looked through a camera and composed some of his paintings so that the dancers would be off to the edge of the frame. I was very interested in that. But when I was your age, that was my sort of like, oh, this connects with the art that I love to study photography. Do you have any pieces you're working on lately? Well, um, as you know, because you've had me in class, I also do video. And uh, I recently did a, um, a video that was, I got Nick Vanderwood to, to sing Imagine for me, which is the John Lennon song, Imagine There's No Heaven, right? right. We all live together. Incidentally, I was, I was putting that together in quick time and it, all of a sudden his voice went, <laughs> you know, and it's like the imagine, like, <laughs> I thought, oh, that's kind of interesting. So I overlaid it with photos of young, mostly black men who had been killed by the police. Mm -hmm. And some were women, actually. Do you, um, do you get to go travel the world? And what's your favorite area? Of the world? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well... There are lots of places that I've gone. I haven't gone to Asia, for instance, so I, I don't think I'm very well traveled. But of the places that I have traveled out of the United States, um, I'm, I, I actually enjoyed Liverpool, England very much. It seemed like England, but it was, it was very American as well. So I fit in very well in Liverpool. I thought I felt very at home in Liverpool. I was there for maybe five days or six days. I was at a conference, but I got to um, uh, before the conference. I photographed, and after the conference, I photographed. And I spent a lot of time in museums. And they had a, of course, there's a Beatles museum there. But um, it was um, the Tate Modern. I had gone to a show there, and the show was called The Summer of Love. And it was 1967, and of course that was when I was a teenager. And um, it was all video. And I thought, man, I can do those psychedelic <laughs> videos, you know? So I kind of got interested in video. So that was, what, 2005, maybe I was in Liverpool. So I have a very good memory of that place. Um, I visited friends in Germany. Um, I had two students, one Ruth Herzog and then uh, Claudia. Remember Claudia's last name, Esser, Claudia Esser. Uh, they were fabulous hosts. You know, made sure I took the train and saw all these different places in Germany. And I was teaching a core class, so that was very handy. I did a lot of stuff with Gothic cathedrals. Um, I visited a student in Turkey in Istanbul, and that was really <laughs> great. Took a, drove a car with an Elmira College alum, Polly Honan. 
we drove all the way to, I drove to Ankara. I got to see uh, Cappadocia, which are those buildings that are carved into the side of mountains that look like a fairyland. That was very fun. So I, you know, Canada has some fabulous places. I went to the Gaspé Peninsula. Amazing, amazing place to be. Um, Quebec City is fabulous. I've been to the West Coast. All of these are great places. I love traveling, but Istanbul is great because the places you're seeing are ancient. So you go to uh, the Hagia Sophia, and that was, you know, from Byzantine era. And it was the human, the human civilization, and the human mind can create such fabulous architecture and, and um, you know, shape their environment that lasts over time. I don't know if the environments that we build today are going to be like that. I don't think so. How would you describe contemporary art? <laughs> Um, I think we live at a very interesting time, and I would consider the times we live a postmodern time. I like that. I'm so glad I live at this time because it embraces all kinds of art, and it makes you look at people doing creative things from a lot of points of view. So. Um, I feel like the, anth the area of anthropology has taught us that we always see the world with a bias, and that bias has to do with who, how we were raised, the country we were raised in, the language we speak, uh, and we tended to think that, oh, well, we can look at art from any culture and we understand what that art is because art just speaks without language and doesn't need to be explained but that's so not true and I, that's why I love the, it, the times now because we are so able to know the world instantly I mean I could go on the internet right now and find out what's happening in you know Tokyo or um, you know, I don't know, South Africa you name the place I could find something that's going on and, but I don't really like see it, I see it through my vision, which is an American, white American woman, older American <laughs> woman. Um, so I might think I understand the art that I'm, that's out there, contemporary art, meaning any art that's being created right now. But I, I, I think what the postmodern world is saying to me is, yeah, you can look at that art, but you got to remember that you, you are are putting your own uh, personal biases on that. Uh, I teach a class called Mashups, and I love the idea of taking something from one culture and sort of collaging it onto another culture and seeing what happens, or just uh, studying the Dada's that mo movement where uh, you take, the, where uh, Marcel Duchamp took a urinal and put it on a pedestal, and then people had to come in and look at that. Uh, and be shocked by it, and um, I just like art that makes you think, and there's a lot of contemporary art out there that I think is just pretty, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's uh, some contemporary art that's out there to shock you, and that is okay, but the best, I think, is art that makes you think, that makes you sort of see those biases that I was talking about already, like earlier about how I feel about myself. I just was reading in the New York Times about David Hammonds, who was an African-American artist, and um, one of the pieces that he did is he put, um, well, he's got several that are really great. Like one is that he took a, um, uh, a basketball and he dribbled it on a piece of paper and it's called something like traveling, you know, like in basketball, how you, you're not allowed to travel with the ball, right? <laughs> uh, but it's Harlem, ha traveling with the Harlem dust or something like that. And he's created this really soft kind of drawing out of just the basketball bouncing on that paper. And he 
he's making a comment, you know, about so many things. It's very subtle, but if you're a young black man, for instance, one of the ways you could be successful and rich in your imagination would be a great basketball player. And so he sort of um, does a lot of artwork that, that, that makes you think about if you were a young black man, what are your, what sh where, where do you go to be successful? So you're a musician. He has one that's called the Three Mics. So it was Michael Jackson, Michael Jordan, and Mike Tyson. So you know, what, what are you a boxer? Are you a, a basketball player? Or are you a, a, um, a singer? And you have to be a performer. You know, it's not like uh, he did these in the 80s. It's not like he could be president of the United States. So that's also why I love living right now, because we have a president of the United States who actually became the president, and he's a black man, or at least he is half black. Um, so yeah, I like that kind of art that makes me look at it, but also makes me think. It makes me think about being in another person's life and how they see the world that's very different from how I see the world. Um, I don't dislike just a pretty picture. But do you understand why I'm, what I'm saying about yeah. the contemporary art that I like is really art that maybe reflects the culture and questions the culture and maybe even expresses a little bit of a political opinion. Right. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>